I encourage everyone to get their toxin levels tested. And I think if, if we made this mainstream, we could change the, chemi- the chemical industry to actually look out for our health. You know, imagine, because right now, the, what I'm about to share with you is not a mainstream test. You cannot go to your, your normal primary doctor and say, you know what, I went to a presentation about DDT and PCB levels and phthalates, and I want to get my levels checked. But especially, I want to say, if you're overweight or have other medical issues, I would want to know that because knowing that will help you figure out how to treat the problem. you got to get to the underlying cause. So again, these are not yet mainstream tests, but I'm hoping we can make them that way. So this is from a, a patient, a current patient of mine who, who I'm seeing in, in Tampa, Florida. And uh, all the way over on the right, our current levels of his toxins look here, BPA, his, his current, his, his initial level was 7.65 and it went down to 5.72 and that's after one month. Now you might say, well, is there still some there? Yeah, he's still there. He's still getting treatment. He's getting intensive IV treatment every day, at least Monday through Friday. And, but, but contrast this with what I was taught is there's only one way to get rid of these toxins and that's either to lactate or have a baby. Well, this patient's male. So I'm here to tell you that that's, that's old information. And, and, and I can't give you a source. This is not well published, um, but it looks like we're gonna need to, to, to push this, this information through. Here's another example, ethylparabens. Parabens are another uh, obesogen level went from 158 down to 73. Um, Hyperic acid, 3-methyl hyperic acid went down. Oh, and and, and, um, another one, glyphosate, also known as Roundup, went down from 8.72 to 8.12. All right, so, and, and these are just some examples. What's frustrating is you can only, you know, even though someone may have been exposed to 10,000 different chemicals, you may only be able to test for 100. But that sample will at least guide you on what you need to do or not need to do, especially if you're having symptoms. Okay. All right, and similarly, we can use a a similar strategy for fatty toxins from mold. So here were his mold levels when he, he, from, from, a month ago, the worst, I'll tell you the worst, one of the worst uh, type of molds is black mold and it produced, it's also called stachybotrys is one type. And the toxin are, are some of these trichothecenes like for verocarin and his level went down from 10 to seven. And so, some of his other ones went down too. So, uh, and that's the key. It's it's consistency. So I recommend people get tested. You know, your primary doctor is probably not going to test you for these toxins. You can, and, and, and I'll show this slide at the, at the end if, if you, I've got a, um, a QR code too that I'll show at the end if, if you're interested in that. Let, let me see if there are uh, any comments. Oh, are these tests available in New York? That's a great question. Unfortunately, not. Uh, there are a couple of states, New York included, that is not interesting. They don't want people to be tested for this. Hmm. You know, I, I think it's crazy. It seems like the health of, of farm animals is, is more of a priority than humans. That's what our society has become. I don't think it's right. All right. So, what are some natural ways to lower? fatty toxins and adipose tissue. Because I understand you'd be like, hey, I don't want to go get IVs every day and I don't want you to. So what are some th- natural ways to lower fatty toxin, toxins in, in your fat tissue? One is fasting. And I'm a big fan of fasting. If you're going to be doing you know, more than a few days, get it medically supervised like a true north. Exercise is another way. And these ways work because they're mobilizing the fat. And when fat gets broken down, the toxins get mobilized too. 
Another is eat cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli. It increases the glycerinization to decrease the BPA levels from studies. And then finally, binding agents like zeolite. Now, I'll warn you, do not take binding agents at the same time you take other supplements because it will just bind up the supplements. It won't hurt you, it just won't help you. So how quickly do you want to escape the, the fat trap? That's my question to you all. So one question that often comes up is, uh, but Dr. Josh, what about organic meat? That's got to be okay, right? Because it says organic. Yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm a fan of organic fruits and vegetables and grains. I'm not a fan of organic meat. And this is why. This is a study. Consumption of organic meat does not diminish the carcinogenic potential from persistent organic pollutants because the organic meat has the same, if not higher levels of these obesogens and you might say, or carcinogens. And you might say, well, why is that? And one reason is that I believe they let these animals that, that end up being harvested for organic live longer. If you let animals live longer at the top of the food chain, they're gonna soak up these toxins. Like I, I mentioned Roundup, or glyphosate before, there's Roundup now in the rainwater. You're basically trusting every step below that animal in the production that there are no toxins there. And as, as our society, our industrial society goes on longer, we're producing more and more chemicals that end up getting into the food chain.